All right, so today I'm gonna to talk about my least favorite thing to do while overlanding, and that is maintenance and working on my vehicle. If you're a weekend overlander or just going out for vacation, this doesn't necessarily uh, apply to you when it comes to maintenance. Usually you do that before, you know, when you need to do it, you're gonna do it after. For me, uh, being out on the road eight straight months, hopefully, and I'm uh, just under three months in, I need to do maintenance on the road and I don't want to pay somebody else to do it. Um, one, I want to make sure it's done right and two, I don't necessarily have the funds to uh, be paying people for something that I can do. So for that reason, I have a ton of tools with me, um, not just for the maintenance but for to take care of anything that may come up. And I have even this uh, full head to toe tankers outfit which is like a military flight suit. Um, I've used this multiple times. I use it uh, to crawl around on the ground looking for maybe a potential problem, checking things out, and uh, I'm not afraid to get this dirty. I only have so many clothes in the Jeep. I don't want to get those all greasy and dirty. So for that reason, I actually carry this thing around and I use it often um, and have to clean it because it can get pretty dirty. I have uh, I've had my share of leaks and issues with this thing. Um, it is not spotless underneath and even for the dirt, uh, not just the grease and everything else, but all the dust and dirt, it, it helps a lot. Um, and uh, I'm glad I did bring it because I, I use them at home and uh, I've used it multiple times on the road. So this thing has already had uh, 10,000 miles put on it. And luckily I've been at a couple of friends house, one in Texas and now here where I've either had a gar carport or a garage to work on this thing. and it's helped tremendously. So not only do I have to do regular maintenance, which includes, you know, changing out fluids, but I'd also need to rotate my tires. Uh, today, I'm gonna rotate my tires again, and I might have to do a brake job. I was just home real quick uh, in North Carolina a couple of weeks ago, and since I had a lot of brakes for this thing, sitting there, I actually brought a full set back with me, knowing that uh, within the next month or so, I'm gonna have to change the brakes out on this. Even though I did it right before this trip, um, I've got big tires and uh, a lot of weight in this thing. There's a lot of stopping uh, going on and the holding power needs to be there when I'm going up and down high elevations, either on trails or roads and things like that. So for that reason, even things like that I need to do. So I can't really afford to pay somebody else to do it. One, two, I need to uh, make sure that it's done correctly. And three, some of this stuff might have to get done on the side of the road. So for that reason, I am fully prepared to do whatever I need to do. Um, and some of the things that I've already come across, uh, I broke a sway bar link. So I actually had to buy a kit to, to back out the bolt on that. Got that uh, fixed. I already replaced my AC compressor out in the desert. And I just replaced the rear leaf springs on this a few days ago here in this garage. Uh, I had them sent to my buddy knowing that, knowing that uh, I was gonna have to do that because it was just, it was sagging too much in the back um, for what I wanted to do on the trails and it kept revving too much. So all of that I did with the tools I had on hand. I had a couple of tools here that my buddy had that made my job a little bit easier, but I could pretty much do all of that. I did do all that with the tools that I have, um, but Getting back to the maintenance, it is imperative that you work on these things uh, when they need to be done. Uh, if you don't, you're either going to run into problems, you're going to run into bigger problems, it's going to cost you more time, it's going to cost you more money. So with that said, make sure that you do the right maintenance on your vehicle while you're overlanding. Um, yesterday in this, I changed out all the oil added washer fluid. I actually changed out some of my transmission fluid. I didn't do it full flush or drop the pan or anything, but I refreshed the, uh, the, the fluid. I checked my gear oils. I actually took the plug out of my transfer case and, dra and drained all the fluid that would come out of there and replaced that with fresh fluid. And um, today, like I said, I'm rotating the tires and if the brakes need to be changed, I'm gonna, gonna change those out as well. Oh, another thing that I did, and this was the biggest mess because it's a pain in the butt with this thing, is uh, I refreshed about two gallons worth of the radiator fluid. Um, I know it needs a complete flush, but 
in this garage and where I'm at, I, I just don't have the ability to do that without making a complete mess. Um, and uh, it had been done not too long ago. I just mostly did it to refresh, refresh, excuse me, refresh all the fluid. And uh, because it's 110 degrees outside here in Southern California, um, we were just out on the trails and the heat does rise higher than it normally does. I wanted to make sure that was done. Um, I don't have a problem if the AC is not on, but if the AC is on, I, I do get higher temperatures. So for that reason, I just wanted to refresh that um, two gallons of it all together and uh, just make sure I stay up on top of this stuff. I, I dread doing it. I don't like doing it, um, but it's something that's got to be done. So I'll show you real quick. Uh, some of the things that I bring with me, some of them you're going to say is overkill, but you know what? Like I said, I need to be doing, I need to do whatever I can uh, on the side of the road if I have to. The leaf springs, I could have done that on the side of the road. AC compressor I did in the desert, and uh, most other things I want to be able to do. Um, and if I have to, um, for an example, when I was at a camping spot not that long ago, a guy came up, it was a big spot, and asked if he could change out his... Uh, his uh, brake rotors um, beside me in uh, the open area and uh, he was an extensive overlander and he was just looking for a spot to do it he had all the tools to do it but that that's what I'm talking about you got to you know in some cases if, if you don't have the ability to be towed you're worried about being stuck out in the middle of nowhere and or um, you don't have the funds like me to pay someone else to do it then you, you really do need to be prepared I'm not going to go through a whole list of everything that I have item by item. I'm leaving some stuff out, but I'm just giving you a general idea of what I have. Yes, it's a lot of weight, but the peace of mind is worth it. And with how many things I've already done on this thing, and I am guessing the amount of things I'm going to have to do before this trip is over, I like having all these tools. I have them all stuck in the wheel well on the passenger side, and um, that way it keeps the weight at least towards the bottom of the vehicle. But um, for me, it's peace of mind. I've already used a lot of the tools, um, some extensively, and I've actually had to use some of the tools I thought I wouldn't use just because of the location that a bolt was or, um, you know, room in general and or uh, just, you know, different sizes of different things uh, being better to either torque down a nut or get at something, um, whatever it may be. So let me give you a quick review of some of the things that I have, but not all. Um, and even I have a bottle jack. When I was at my buddy's uh, in Texas, I actually went on Craigslist and found four jack stands, which I needed to change or rotate my tires. I could have paid somebody like 40 something dollars to do it. I'm not from the area. I didn't know who to go to for cheap, but to rotate my tires, called around and, and the minimum I found was 40 bucks. I found the jack stands for 25. And I used my bottle jack to jack up all four corners, put the jack stands underneath to get the whole thing off the ground, rotate my tires. But more importantly, what I wanted to do was also check the brakes and everything behind the tire to make sure that the, there wasn't something there um, that maybe they would have missed and, and that I should have seen. So for that reason, it was worth saving the extra few dollars and uh, just having that peace of mind and, and doing it myself. So here are a lot of the tools that I bring with me and use. Um, that particular bag belongs to my buddy. But I've even got uh, oil pans, two of them, uh, for catching fluids. And they don't take up any weight and very little space since you can put stuff in them. Uh, but uh, I've got a couple of funnels there. And then here are a lot of the tools that I keep separated in bags. Um, but I've got miscellaneous items. I've even got like thread tape. And then I've got a, a multimeter in there, extra nuts and bolts, plus a couple of uh, extra lug nuts. And then I've got metric wrenches, SAE wrenches, uh, screwdrivers. This bag is full of uh, drill bits, Allen wrenches, and things like that because I actually brought my cordless drill. And I have the charger, which I charge on the inverter in my vehicle. I've got pliers and probably too many of those, but I like having a variety because... Uh, it's already paid off. I've got 3 8 inch socket set, a half inch socket set, and I even brought my star bits, which helped me out a lot uh, yes, two days ago when I was replacing the leaf springs because I had to loosen something that was tightened up with star bits on the back. 
um, and then a quarter inch socket set and uh, yeah I'm sure a lot of people are saying it's too much but I've already had to go smaller larger and use different uh, things out of each one of those bags because something wouldn't work otherwise so I'm glad I had it this breaker bar has saved me uh, already a bunch of times not only is it great for easily taking off the lug nuts but when I took off my leaf springs um, that made a huge difference. I didn't have to get creative with a long pole or anything like that. That breaker bar did everything. And then I've even got uh, the crowbar, which I've used, and uh, this large screwdriver. I mostly use that for um, prying things and or uh, use it to jack up the bottle jack rather than the little uh, rod that it gives you. And then a couple of hammers that go along with it. Deep creep, I've used that multiple times already on uh, loosening up things before I uh, took the bolts off the leaf springs. Good example of that. I hit that two days before, a day before, and the day of, and those bolts came right off. I got pretty lucky. Um, they were only on there for three years, but still, uh, without it, I think I would have struggled a bit more. And then, of course, WD-40. I've got my bottle jack uh, with the axle cradle, and that's come in super handy already as well. So that is a lot of what I have, um, but like I said, you know, I've already had to replace my leaf springs uh, and the air compressor, and I'm going to be changing out my brakes here shortly. Uh, I even have a, a tarp. I didn't want to get my buddy's floor all dirty um, and stained, so I put that down there when I replaced all the fluids yesterday. But So like I said, it has come in really handy for this thing. And I'm gonna keep uh, working on it. So I'm prepared, and um, it's like I said, it's already paid off. But you know, it it's one of those things where if you don't do it, and and believe me, I I dread doing this. I don't look forward to these days. I was out here most of the day yesterday replacing all the fluids, um, and then something always goes wrong whenever I'm doing stuff. So one thing leads to another, and our job takes three. But um, I am doing it. Um, I'm taking advantage of being in a spot like this, but you know with everything that I have I could do what I know another buddy of mine has done and just find a secluded area Change out your oil. Of course you want to do it environmentally friendly um, You know what I do is uh, you know everything goes into that into that pan when I empty the bottle to go or put the oil back in I just take that oil and, and put it in the old bottle and then uh, drop it off at a uh, AutoZone or Advanced Auto or whatever's out, you know, in your area. Um, so, you know, you do want to be environmentally conscious about everything and dispose of everything properly. Try not to make a mess and, and drip oil everywhere or transmission fluid. And that's why I have two pans because sometimes the oil <laughs> or, or the fluid doesn't go uh, where you want it to and you need to have a backup. But um, I always I'll put the tarp down as well. Uh, to contain some of that if it were to happen because because things happen it's it's not about being dumb or anything but you know everyone who's worked on their vehicles had something happen that they didn't expect so I try to be prepared for that I try to be uh, conscious of, of my environment and um, it's uh, it's just it's something like I said that that you need to consider um, when you're doing long-term overlanding you can't um, you can't ignore this stuff because it will lead to other problems but Anyway, um, I didn't show everything that I have. I have an entire box full of extra fluids, extra parts that I think I might need. I have had to go into that box to be creative um, for a couple of little things and um, even had to top off some, uh, some fluid the other day uh, because I don't think maybe I checked it properly before I left, um, but I had to add a little bit of brake fluid. It just seemed a little bit low, uh, but I don't have a leak anywhere. I've already looked, so. But it's not just about the maintenance, it's about, you know, checking your vehicle, too. I'm constantly looking under this thing for leaks. I'm constantly looking under the hood. Something else that I actually did um, that's also a pain is I've got a uh, K&N type, you know, cold air filter on this thing that came on it when I bought it. Not a big fan of it, but that thing is was disgusting. And uh, so I had to go out and buy a recharge kit. So yesterday I spent, you know, part of the day I was cleaning that getting all the oils off and then it has to dry for who knows how long. I mean, out here in 110 degree weather, it didn't take more than a few hours, but I let it dry overnight and I uh, just oiled it up today and I'll stick that thing back on when I'm uh, checking all the fluids and making sure that everything is uh, as it should be. But um, 
So that, that's what I do. Uh, I highly recommend it to other people to at least acknowledge the fact that you've got to do maintenance and stay up on it, whether you pay somebody or do it yourself. Just be prepared for that. Don't overlook um, that semi-simple thing. It's not simple when you're doing it yourself. Uh, and then prepare for that. I knew I was coming here. I knew I was going to Texas. So I'm like, all right, I need to do this, 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 and this while I have a, a roof over my head. Um, and uh, I can lay out all my tools like you just saw there. I can grab everything easily. And uh, in the case of my buddy, I even used uh, one of his um, because my Allen wrench wasn't big enough for getting off the uh, transfer case uh, nut. So that actually worked out really well. And I'm glad I decided to do it here and not somewhere else where I wouldn't have had that tool. So, and now that's something else that I need to pick up. But um, anyway, um, Feel free to leave your comments and suggestions. Uh, I'm sure there's gonna be a few of those. But uh, like I said, maintenance. You gotta do it, do it. Don't regret not doing it. And uh, I'll continue to do it for the next five months while I'm on the road. And also be prepared for anything else that comes up because um, I'm sure it's gonna happen. But uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and talk to you later.